Hello, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. This is Bethel Temple Fellowship. We are coming to you from the beautiful city of Jefferson, Texas. I'm Pastor Lynette Bonner. Uh, Rabbi Linda is taking some time off and she'll be back in the next few weeks. Um, so let's, we're just going to begin to um, service and thank you all for tuning in right now. We are going to start the Shabbat service with uh, the blowing of the shofar. Um. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to light the Shabbat candles. Amen. 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 Let's pray for Israel. Brother. Oh, Shema, sorry. Shema Israel. Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord, and we lift up the nation of Yisrael and especially the holy city of Yerushalayim. Lord God, we pray for Yerushalayim tonight, that there would be peace in the streets of Yerushalayim. Throughout the old city and the new city, Lord God, let there be your shalom, Yeshua, throughout all of the city streets, Lord God, in the homes, Lord God. We pray for your shalom to be in the West Bank as well as in Gaza, Lord God. We pray for your shalom to be as far north as the Golan, as far south as Samaria, Lord God. And we ask in the name of Yeshua throughout all of Judea, Lord, that your shalom would exist. From as far from as far west as Haifa and Tel Aviv, as far east, Lord God, as the border between Israel and Jordan, we pray for your shalom. And we pray especially that, Lord God, that our Jewish brothers and sisters would come to know you, Yeshua, the Mashiach, as their personal Savior, and that they would step into the fullness of faith in you. And we pray especially for the holy city according to your word. Sha'alu shalom, Yerushalayim. Amen. Pastor Bob, can you pray for, uh, pray for America, please? Heavenly Father, we come this morning with thanksgiving. For we can go to you, the rock of our salvation, the hate of the land. Right now we pray for America and the beautiful Lord. One stood for you, good God. And so many nights I turn back on you and think of it the wrong way. I pray that you pray for our leaders of our country, for everyone in this country, Lord Jesus, that they will come to a point where they will open up their eyes and their minds and open up their hearts to realize and recognize that you are the only hope, you are the only answer to America. As America turns from a book of ways, and church to you, Lord, thank you for this, America. In the name of prayer, amen. Amen. Sister Alexis, can you please pray for the community in this city? Dear Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, for this community, Lord, of Jefferson, Lord, and the county surrounding Father. We, we pray, Lord, for the people here that if they are looking for you, Father, that they would be able to find this place of worship, Father. We pray that you would just work on their hearts that they would be able to understand who you are and have the desire to want to come to you, Father. We pray, Lord, for the people in the town, the people who are help running it, Father, that you'll just uh, also
also be with them, Father, that they'll be able to make right decisions, Father. We thank you, Lord, for those people, Lord, in high places, that they, they will be able to take care of the city, Lord, and um, do with it according to your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the city and everyone in it. And we pray that you would also use us to be able to minister, Lord, to the city of Jefferson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll do some praise and worship. Amen. And then we're going to have uh, our special guest, Hunter Bonner, uh, give us the word. Amen. Amen.
Jesus, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise, Father. We're here, Father, to worship you, Lord. To worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Everything that's gone on today, Lord, we just let it rest, Father God, and just focus on you, my Father, my King. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Just tell them how much you love them. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Receive our worship, Lord. Receive our worship,
get ready to take the Kaddish, the communion. Just focus on him. Just worship him. Lord, everything I give you, everything I am, Lord, is consecrated unto you, Father God. I give you my heart. I give you my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions, Lord. I give it to you, Lord. This is my right now, have your way later tonight, have your way all through this year, Lord God, 2022, Lord, have your way in each and every one of our lives, have your way, whether we're coming in or whether we're going out, have your way, Lord God, in every step that we take, Lord God, we pray that it is ordered by you, so tonight, we get ready to take the bread. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. We thank you, Yeshua, Lord God, that this bread represents your body that was given freely in our place, Lord God. As an offering for our sins, the sins of the world, Lord God, we remember tonight, Lord God, your great sacrifice. We thank you, O oh God, Lord, as we take this bread tonight, that we don't just go through an emotion or a religious ritual, but, Lord God, we remember, Lord, what you did on the cross. And we know that you are the bread of life, Yeshua. And we put our faith and trust in you. And we bless your name tonight. In your name we pray. Thank you, Yeshua. Amen. Let's partake. As we take the cup, Barukata Adonai Elohenu Malech Haolam Bori Peri Hagafin. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. We thank you, Yeshua, that this represents your blood that was shed for us, Lord, our sins, Lord, that covers them completely and wholly, Lord. And Lord God, your blood is what is, Lord God, it is the blood, Lord God, 
that allowed, Lord God, the death angel to pass over the houses of the Israelites, Lord, so that they may live, Lord God. And it is your blood, Yeshua, that gives us eternal life. When we ask, Lord God, to believe that your blood covers our sins, Lord God, you grant us that eternal life. You pass over, Lord God, us and bring us into your marvelous life. We ask that you bless this tonight as we take it, Lord God, and let us remember the great sacrifice that you made, Yeshua. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's partake. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, I was going to do this standing up, and I think I'm going to do it sitting down. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. That was terrible. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Ah, there we go. Praise the Lord. Well, this week's uh, Torah portion um, is uh, Parashat Bo. So if you have your Bibles, uh, you're going to want to turn to the book of Exodus. And that is going to be Exodus chapter 11. So, I have a computer up here. I also have my uh, Bible. So, I'm going to be doing a little bit of double duty. So, just bear with me as I try to coordinate with only two arms and two hands. Um, Exodus chapter 11. And we're going to begin. Tonight, we're going to start in chapter 11. And we're going to read verses 1 through 10. And then we're going to jump down uh, to chapter 12. And read verses um, 29 uh, through uh, 33, and th 29 through 33, and then 36. Now, um, for those of you um, who are watching, you know we always have our our parish shots up on the um, on the website at BethelTempleFellowship.org, uh, and our parish shot this week again is Bo, um, and the Torah portion is Exodus 10, beginning with verse one. And then that goes through chapter 13, verse 16. Uh, the Haftarah, which again is the prophets, is uh, Jeremiah 46, 13 through 28. So Jeremiah 46, 13 through 28. And then the Brit Hadashah is Luke 22, 7 through 30. And 1 Corinthians 11, 20 through 34. So those are always posted up on our website uh, for you to uh, read up on. They're posted up there usually by... Sunday evening, if not uh, by Monday morning. So we're going to start in Exodus 11, beginning with verse 1. <coughs> Excuse me, can somebody bring me a bottle of water, please? Thank you. Exodus 11, verse 1. Adonai said to Moshe, I am going, I'm going to bring still one more plague on Pharaoh and, and Egypt, and after that he will let you leave here. When he does let you go, he will throw you out completely. Let me read that again. When he does let you go, he will throw you out completely. Now tell the people that every man is to ask his neighbors and every woman her neighbor for gold and silver jewelry. I do not make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people. Moreover, Moshe was regarded by Pharaoh's servants and the people as a very great man in the land of Egypt. Moshe said, here is what Adonai says. About midnight I will go into Egypt and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt will die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh sitting on his throne to the firstborn of the slave girl at the handmill and all the firstborn of the livestock. There will be a horrendous wailing throughout all the land of Egypt. There has never been another like it and there never will be again. 
But not even a dog's growl will be heard against any of the people of Israel, neither against people nor against animals. In this way you will realize that Adonai distinguishes between Egyptians and Israel. All your servants will come down to me, prostrate themselves before me and say, Get out, you and all the people who follow you. And after that, I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in the heat of anger. Adonai said to Moshe, Pharaoh will not listen to you, so that still more of my wonders will be shown in the land of Egypt. Moshe and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, but Adonai had made Pharaoh hard-hearted, and he didn't let the people of Israel leave his land. Now let's jump down to chapter 12, verse 29. 12, 29 through 33. At midnight, Adonai killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh sitting on his throne to the firstborn of the prisoner in the dungeon and all the firstborn of livestock. Pharaoh got up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a horrendous wailing in Egypt, for there wasn't a single house without someone dead in it. He summoned Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Up and leave my people, both you and the people of Israel, and go and serve Adonai as you said. Take both your flocks and your herds as you said, and get out of here, but bless me too. The Egyptians pressed to send the people out of the land quickly, because they said, Otherwise we'll all be dead. The people took their dough before it had become leavened and wrapped their meeting bowls and their clothes and on their shoulders. The people of Israel had done what Moshe had said. They had asked the Egyptians to give them silver and gold, jewelry and clothing. And I would not make the Egyptians so favorably disposed toward the people that when they had let them have whatever they requested, thus they plundered the Egyptians. Amen? Amen. May God have his richest blessings on the reading of his word. Now, I want to go back to chapter 11 real quick and look at verse 3. Adonai made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people. Moreover, Moshe was regarded by Pharaoh's servants and the people as a very great man in the land of Egypt. Now, I did not have this in my notes, but God just struck something with me right here as I was reading this. You have to understand, Moshe left the land about 40 years before this as a criminal, as a wanted man. But now he's come back years later, and the people, the Egyptians, regarded him as a great man. Of, and not just any great man, a very great man in the land of Egypt. In other words, throughout, you think about all the great people in Egypt at that time, Moshe was considered to be among them, and he wasn't really one of them. Yes, he had been raised as an Egyptian, but he was not an Egyptian by birth. He was a Jew. And therefore, even Pharaoh's servants said, this man is a great man. And what God was showing me here was, is that even amongst unbelievers, God's glory and through his servants will be clearly shown. Amen? You know, God gave commands to Moshe to tell Pharaoh, the governing authority, to let God's children go. And as we read tonight, the ultimate plague of death was the firstborn. And God told Moshe, he said, Yet one plague more will I bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will drive you away completely. Now, in the, in the, in the, uh, the, uh, the complete Jewish Bible... It says, when he does let you go, he will throw you out completely. Notice the word completely there. Completely. Completely is defined as totally and utterly and without qualification. Without qualification. So what that means is, is that unlike previously where Pharaoh was trying to put conditions on their release, he said, but who exactly is going? Oh, Adonai will surely be with you if I let you go with your children and your flocks. You know, no, just take them in. Isn't that what you want? 
Remember, remember that from the pair of shots this week? Isn't that what you want? You just want to go with your with your with just the, the men, right? Pharaoh was trying to put the conditions on the release, but God's command was absolute and without qualification. Amen. In fact, I mean, if you want to try to find a qualification, the qualification was, I'm God and I said it. That's all God needs. God doesn't need anybody to qualify what he says. God is the, he's the creator of all things, so he's the creator of qualifications. Amen? No one tells him. No one tells him what conditions will be upon his commandments. Amen? So it was going to happen regardless of what anyone said, whatever they thought, and whatever they did. Amen? The deliverance of Israel was exactly that. It was totally, it was completely, and it was without qualification. He got Moshe up in the middle. Let, let me tell you something, folks. It was so dire. It was so dire that Moshe and Aaron were woke up in the middle of the night. Woke up in the middle of the night and said, get out of here. In other words, it couldn't wait till morning. Get up and leave. But God did not send them any away empty-handed. Did you notice that? He did not send them into the wilderness journey without having what they thought they needed to start a nation. In Exodus 2, it says, sorry, Exodus 11, 2. Speak now in the hearing of the people that they ask every man of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor for silver and gold jewelry. And the Lord gave the people favor in sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moshe was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of his people. Again, we, we read those verses. And again, it says that they were urgent to send them out. The people were wanting to get rid of them. Like they had had enough. They had had enough of the nonsense. They said, we're going to die. And it says they plundered the Egyptians. So think about this, folks. They were a nation. Israel was a nation, but they were under bondage. They were under slavery. And they were beholden to the dependency of the treasures of Egypt or their economy. In other words, they couldn't have food or houses or clothing without being dependent upon the Egyptian government. Amen? Egypt, for 400 plus years, was part of their very survival. <laughs> But Israel was meant to be independent. You see, God promised Abraham centuries before, your people will inherit this land. It didn't say you're going to be, it didn't say that the Egyptians were going to, you know, that the Egyptians were going to establish this land for you. He said, you will inherit this land. You have to have funds when starting a nation, and God knew that. You think America got formed based upon charity? No. You can go back in your history books and you can read about it. And it says clearly in here that, you know, that God told them, take the money from the Egyptians. They will give it to you. And they were willing to, they were like, just take whatever and get out. That's what happened. God knew that they needed financing to start a nation. So he wasn't going to send them into the promised land for failure. God does not set people up for failure. When God says he will do something, he doesn't. It doesn't matter if it's deliverance, salvation, and direction in life. It is 100% God ordained. And we will succeed if we just walk in what he tells us to do. Amen? Now you may say, well, I failed at some things. Well, then the question that I have to ask is, was God really at the center of that? Yes, there are things that you will fail at, you know, just in the sense of like, if you were trying to learn a new skill or something, but maybe it was something that, that you just wanted to do yourself, but did you line it up with the Word of God? Did God really call you to do what it is that you were doing? See, God called the people out of Israel. He called them out. He said, when you talk to them, here's my name, it is I am. 
Excuse me. Abraham was told to go into a country that he didn't know anything about. Think about that. Where do you want me to go? Well, I don't know anything about that place, but you know what? God told him to go, and he went. Amen? God told them to go, and they went. In Exodus 12, 1 through 4, uh, it says, uh, it says in um, Exodus 12 that Abraham was 75 years old when God told him to leave. I may have that, that chapter wrong, I beg your pardon. But Abraham was a very old man when God told him to leave. Moshe was approximately 80 years old, folks, when he was told to return and face the king of Egypt. He didn't get an Uber. He had to walk across the land. He had to walk across the land. 80 years old. Hey, I've been to the Middle East, folks. Let me tell you something. The terrain is unforgiving. If you don't believe me, take a trip to the Dead Sea. It is an absolute wasteland down there. And even when you're not in the Dead Sea, even some of the, 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 the other parts of Israel, which are very, very beautiful, some of the land is unforgiving in terms of the terrain. Now, you'd be an 80-year-old person trying to walk across all of that in a pair of sandals. There was no barrel shoes back then, okay? But God told them to go, and he went, and they went. So understand this, that age... Or your previous occupation, what was Moshe's previous occupation? He was a prince of Egypt. He lived in the royal courts. He, he ate the best food. He was a rich man. Your age, whatever your previous occupation was, whatever your geographic location is, does not limit God from carrying out his plan for his people. Abraham grew up in a pagan society in the Ur in the land of Chaldees. God called him out. Never went back again. Wherever he told them to go, they went. And guess what? When, he, when they went, God provided for them completely. Amen? God did not do things halfway. We do things halfway, but God never does anything halfway. Amen? So what about today? Has God been telling you for some time to go? Remember, what, what's the name of the parashah, everyone? Yeah, Bo. Bo. What does Bo mean? Go. Sorry, what? Go. What does it mean? Go. Go. So you learned some Hebrew tonight. Bo. That doesn't mean Bo to the bridge. Okay? God is... And what about today? Has God been telling you for some time to go and do something that he's called you to do? And have you tried to make up excuses like Moshe did originally? Remember, he is standing in front of the very presence of God, his, his presence, that, fire, that burning bush that did not consume. And he was like, here I am, God, but send somebody else. Anybody but me, God, send somebody. I can't even talk properly. Have you tried to make up excuses like Moshe did? Because he thought that he was not equipped enough to handle the task. Is this you? Are you reluctant because you are not up for the task based on your evaluation? You see, Moshe said, I'm not a good speaker. He thought that he was not a good speaker. Newsflash. Are you listening? Newsflash. Your personal input or analysis means nothing in the face and presence of the Almighty's plans for your life. Amen? Let me repeat that. Your personal input or your own analysis of your skills means nothing in the face and presence of the Almighty's plans for your life. Amen? If God tells you to go, we need to take faith that He has taken care of everything. Amen? He had taken care of everything. He's like, I'm going to send you back into Egypt. I'm going to execute judgment upon the gods of Egypt. And then he's still not going to let you go. Because, you know, I'm paraphrasing here because Pharaoh is a hardhead. But then a 
going to do this one last plague, and then he's not only going to throw you out, he's going to throw you out completely. It's not, oh, we're going to have a little anchor leg back here. You ever, have, you ever try to get away from a situation, but it always seems like there's something that's dragging you back there? Hello? Obviously, that hasn't happened to anybody, right? But God said, no, you are leaving this land forever. You will never go back to it again. If God tells you to go, we need to take faith that he has everything taken care of. Flip over to Hebrews chapter 11 for me, please, folks. Hebrews 11. And we're going to, uh, we're going to, I want you to keep your finger on Hebrews 11, 1. We've all read that before. Hebrews 11, 1. Now, I'm going to read the complete Jewish Bible, and if somebody has a different translation, I'm going to ask you to read it because it's a little bit different. Hebrews 11, 1. Trusting is being confident of what we hope for, convinced about things we do not see. Can somebody else read that in their in their version? And, and please kind of read loud for the uh, for our uh, live stream audience. Hebrews eleven one. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. There you go. Faith. We read this all the time, but have you ever really digested what the message is? In fact, have you ever read Hebrews 11 and truly digested what the message is? The command is to go, and it was coupled with faith of the individual. Amen? At some point when God calls us, we have to have faith that, hey, if God's calling me, he must have something taken care of. He called Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. And he, and he believed that, you know what, God is powerful enough that if I do sacrifice my son, he will raise him from the dead. In fact, the Bible says, and figuratively speaking, he did. Amen? Hebrews 11 one states that clearly that faith is trusted in not on what we can see with our eyes, but what is unseen. And each and every one of those stories demonstrates that like the exodus from Egypt, when God does something, it's in totality. It's not done halfway. Amen? So think about your salvation. Did Yeshua partially save you? Did he only save just a little bit of you? So you could have this part of your old life left over? Did he just only save just a little portion of you? Of course, the answer is no, right? His salvation, Yeshua, Jesus' salvation is perfect, and it was, and it is completed for all time. Amen? Amen. Keep your hands. Keep your hands in Hebrews 11.1, 1, but please flip over to me. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. If you have my Bible, it's on page 1525. 1 John 2, 22 says, My children, I am writing you these things so that you won't sin. But if anyone does sin, we have Yeshua the Messiah, the Tzaddik, who pleads our cause with the Father. Look what else it says. Also, he is the Kapahara for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for those of the world. I started in verse 1, but that's 1 John 2, Verses 1 through 2. It says that he is the covering or the propitiation of our sins, but not just for each and every one of us in here, but for the entire planet. Amen? Think about the most remote places of the world right now, full of sinners. Guess what? Yeshua died for them. Amen? If we flip back over to John three sixteen. It says, For God so loved the world, He became His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you have everlasting life, that's not a halfway job. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you something. God is not going to let the halfway folks into heaven, according to His Word. Amen? You can't halfway serve God. You have to be fully sold out to Him. Now, if you flip back over to Hebrews 9, Hebrews 9, 12 says the following. He entered the holiest place once 
and for all. And he entered not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus setting people free. What? What does your version say? Free, free for how long? I'm sorry, repeat that. Forever. Let's all say it together. One, two, three. Forever. Does forever sound like it's like, is it completely? Does that sound complete? Utterly? Totality? In total? Absolutely it is. You know, if you go back to Hebrews 11, and you flip over to verses, and we're not going to read all of this. But verse 32, look what it says. Look what Paul said. Look what Paul says. And what more should I say? There isn't time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Shimshon, Yiftak, David, Shemuel, and the prophets who. And he lists a whole smattering of God's greatness that he carried out through those people. In other words, he's saying. How many more examples do you need to see that God is a total God? Amen? That his deliverance, that his calling is 100% complete. Amen? That's pretty exciting. But when we think about our salvation, our salvation is 100% complete. Right now, if you're watching out there and you have been wondering, if you've been wondering, hey, am I really saved. If you have a question about it, okay, then you need, if you have a partial question about it, well, God is a complete answer. Amen? Yeshua is the complete answer. He will save you from your sins. If you truly turn your life over to Him, if you say, look, Lord, I've lived, you know, a lot, you know, maybe you've done things that you're completely embarrassed about. We all have. We've all done things that we're ashamed of and that we don't want other people to know about. But you know what? We can't let those things keep us out of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? And if you go to Yeshua right now where you're at, and those who are here with us tonight, if you go to Yeshua right where you're at and you say, Yeshua, please forgive me of my sins and deliver me, it's going to be a total deliverance right on the spot. Amen? It will be a total, total deliverance. You know, there's a verse in the book of Galatians chapter 2. If you want to flip over there with me. Galatians 2. And we're going to hold up there, but Galatians 2.20. Pastor Lynette has sung this song for many, many years. And it is and it doesn't just reference it directly quotes the following. You know what? I, I need somebody to read from the King James Version because the complete Jewish Bible, um, although it says the same thing, I want the, the King James Version. So Galatians 2.20, if you have the King James Version or or something equivalent. Um, just not the complete Jewish Bible. I want that read first, please. King James Version, please. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. When the, it says, when the Messiah was executed at the stake as a criminal... I was too, so that my proud ego no longer lives, but the Messiah lives in me, and the life I, I now live in my body, I live by the same trusting faithfulness that the Son of God had, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Crucified with Christ. If you have given your life to Christ, your sins are forgiven in totality, completely. Your sins have been thrown out. Amen? They've been thrown out. All of your sins, all of your mess-ups that you had prior to that moment, everything is forgiven. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now that does not mean that some may have to reap what they've sown. Right? We've all had to do it. There's things that I've had to reap. I've had to uh, reap what I've sown. But as far as 
The Father above. Yeshua said it best when he was on the, on the cross. What did he say? Right before he died, anybody? Say it louder. It is finished. Say it louder. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. In other words, the separation of God's creation, that part was over. Because God, in that moment, incarnate, died on that cross. And it was the perfect sacrifice for all of mankind. And then he rose on the third day, defeating death, hell, and the grave, folks. That is a total deliverance. It is of the same depth and breadth, but even greater than the exodus of Egypt, but still completely done by God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Just like slavery in Egypt was finished by God, your slavery to sin ends the moment that you give your heart to Christ. Amen? You see, the people of Egypt, the moment that they finally realized that if they would just follow Adonai, if they would follow the great I Am, they would be delivered. Amen? So, those Jews, they woke up that day not knowing that that was going to be their last day in bondage. When they went to sleep that night, they thought, what's that expression? What's that expression we say today about the next day? Uh, tomorrow, that some people say that the uh, that it's the same as yesterday. Same day, it's a different day, same grind. Well, guess what? They woke up, it was a different day, and there was no more grind. Amen? There was no more grind. There was no more sin. There was no more slave. There was no more uh, being a slave to the Egyptians. And when we are delivered by God, when we are delivered by Jesus Christ, by accepting Him into our lives and leading and living a life of Him or through Him, we are delivered from the bondages of slavery. At that very moment, it is gone. So, do you want 2022 to be different? Are you held back by some bondages? Are you held back by some situations? Things that you know that you shouldn't be involved with? Or maybe you backslid. Well, Yeshua is standing there waiting for you to come home. Just like the father was waiting for the prodigal son. He could, when he came home, he didn't, he didn't like, you know, he didn't make him what the prodigal son wanted to be, which was a servant. He said, you're my son, welcome home. My son was lost, but now he's found. He thought his son was pretty much dead. Do you want 2022 to be different? Maybe today could be the last day that you're in bondage. And you know, Yeshua is standing right there and he's just... He's knocking at the door and he's saying, let me in. And when you let him in, he is going to transform your life. All of us here, those who are watching live stream right now, those in this, in this building tonight, we all have our testimonies about how Yeshua delivered us from a life of sin. I dare say that for myself, I may not even be here right now had Yeshua not saved me. Amen? And when we look at when we look at our world today and we see it crumbling around us, we really need to get our lives right with God. Amen. You see, even when there was chaos going around Egypt, guess what? They're in the land of Goshen. Guess guess what things were doing? Things were fine. God will shelter you. That doesn't mean that you may not go through some trials and stuff, but ultimately God's got you. Amen. God, he absolutely has you in the palm of his hand, and no one and nothing is going to snatch you out of his hand. Amen? So, let's go ahead and stand. We're going to go ahead and stand, and we're going to say a prayer tonight, and you know,
with 2022, you know, we just flipped over to 2022 just a few days ago um, in the uh, in the regular in the calendar year that we use here in the West. Think about this next year. Result, you know, people talk about resolutions and, and things of that nature. Just be committed to Christ for this year, Amen. Be committed to Yeshua, to follow Him, to obey His commandments. And, and really get down on your knees this year and pray and ask God, please God, show me what you have planned for my life. Now, if, if he's already shown you and you're stepping out in that, those who are watching out there, then that's great. That's Praise the Lord. We will be praying for you. But if you are saying, you know, there was a time in my life where I was like, God, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing next. Is this all that life is? Wake up, go to work. Go to sleep, rinse and repeat, do the same thing? No, of course, he answered me and said, that's not all there is. That's not all there is. God has so much more for his children. And as we read in the parashah, what did God have for the children of Israel? Well, what he had for the children of Israel was a nation waiting for them. A land that he had promised hundreds of years before then. And when he said go, guess what? They went. Amen? So, Heavenly Father, tonight as we stand here at the beginning, at the head of the year, of this calendar year, we ask God and I that tonight that we understand that there is nothing that you do, Lord God, that is done halfway. That your deliverance, your direction for our life, it's all done completely. When you save a person's soul, Yeshua, that you do it completely. Their old life has passed away. Your, your word says, behold, all things become new, Lord God. And I pray right now for those out there who are watching on live stream. Those who are here with us and those that we've been interceding for here and around the, uh, the, the Marion County area, that Lord God, that they would turn their lives over to you, Yeshua. That they would be delivered, Lord God, from their sins and that they would step into the fullness of the grace of you, Yeshua. Lord God, I pray in the name of Yeshua tonight, oh God. That Lord God, that we dedicate ourselves holy and completely unto you this year. That we step out and we go where you tell us to go. We do what you tell us to do. And in the name of Yeshua, right now, Lord God, I pray for every single person here and those out there watching that you would deeply and richly bless them, Lord God. And that, Lord God, whatever trials and tribulations they are going through, just like with your children in Israel, you would deliver them completely. We believe that you will, O oh God. And we give you praise for it tonight. We thank you, O oh God, for this. In your mighty name we pray. And we just give you all the praise, O oh God. For you are worthy. You are worthy of our praise, Yeshua. Thank you, God. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. You know, folks, tonight, you know, it's real easy to stand at the beginning of the year. I don't know what's going to happen between now and December 31st when New Year's Eve of 2022 rolls around. And I can tell you, though, that with God at the center of our lives, guess what? You have nothing to look forward to except for complete success in Him. Amen? Praise the Lord. So I believe uh, Pastor Lynette is coming forward uh, at this point. And uh, we're going to say uh, the blessing, the priestly blessing. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, start right here. Ya berechega Adonai ke vesperika. Ya era no la pana en la ka ve afnu. Ya sa no la pana en la ka ve asu la ka shalom. 
May Adonai bless you and keep you. May Adonai make his face shine on you and show you his favor. May Adonai lift up his face toward you and give you peace. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you for your shalom, Yeshua, that surpasses all understanding. Your shalom that covers us from our head to our toes, that heals our bodies. Lord God, we thank you in the name of Yeshua right now for that peace that goes with us tonight. Even as we go back to our homes and on the roads tonight, we pray for your shalom to be with us at all times. In your name we pray, Lord, Yeshua. Amen. So I, we just had a few brief announcements tonight. First of all, uh, we are um, we are on the web at BethelTempleFellowship.org. That is our website. On our website, we have all of our announcements of our events. We also post again the parish shop, which is the tour portions. That's at the very top of the page, and we will be posting some events that are going to be coming up, some feasts that will uh, be coming up here very soon. And with that, um, also at BethelTempleFellowship.org, you can go to the top where it says Donate, and from there you, can, you have several ways to electronically give your tithes and offering. And I also want to encourage you, with some feasts coming up here in the next, really in the next couple of months, we would appreciate any donation that you can give that would go towards uh, making, uh, making those feasts happen. And because there, there are some expenses with that, but we pray and, and just ask that as and, and you go into prayer and ask God, you know, to, to move your heart or to whatever gift that he tells you to give. That's used for all uh, sorts of things centered around the feast, the preparations and what have you. We're also located on social media, Facebook, as well as Instagram, and we do have a YouTube channel. This video um, gets uploaded to uh, YouTube each week. And so feel free to like and subscribe on all of our social media pages and hit share and share what you're seeing and what you're hearing with other people. Get that on their feed. So thank you so much. Uh, again, uh, we will have those dates for those events coming up very soon as we iron out some additional details. So please keep, uh, please stay tuned for that. And we thank you so much for everybody who is uh, tuned in here tonight for the live stream and for everybody who's joined us here uh, in Jefferson, Texas. So uh, until uh, next Friday, we say Shabbat Shalom. 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 Shabbat